I'm Ravi Kapoor in New York City. We're along with Shali Kumar and Manasvi. Uh, in the aftermath of the Donald Trump historic victory last night, a lot of people didn't see it coming, but this man clearly knew this was possible. Uh, Shali Kumar founded the Republican Hindu Coalition, uh, very instrumental in helping to coalesce Indian Americans to vote for Donald Trump. Uh, must have been a magical experience for you last night to be there when Donald Trump was declared the winner. That was a great feeling and a great moment. It's a historical win, uh, not only for America, but for uh, Hindus all across the world, uh, Hindu Americans, Indian Americans, and India, and the upcoming relationship between U.S. and India, making 21st to be Indo-American century. Tell us about what you did since the Republican National Convention. We had a, a chat there on the floor, um, much of the chagrin of the Secret Service, I should add, but uh, very interesting to get your thoughts at that time. Much has happened in the few months here. Uh, Donald Trump himself had ups and downs, but somehow he was able to coalesce folks to come out and turn out for him uh, on Election Day. What efforts did you make? And, and tell me about Trump and go inside there a little bit about how Trump was able to pull this off. You see, uh, I had to uh, get my biggest weapon that is sitting right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I called my daughter, uh, Manasvi, uh, who is in Bollywood. And um, so she took, uh, I think it's about three months ago, right, when the RNC took place. So ever since after that, uh, she has been with me. And we have been uh, raising funds for uh, uh, Donald Trump, as well as very active on the uh, ground. Uh, we were uh, uh, given the task of delivering three states, that is Florida, uh, North Carolina, and Ohio. That was our task. So actually, you should have seen uh, Manasvi and my elation and the elation of our um, members at the Trump victory party when those three states were declared, all three. So he said, okay, that's three for three, pretty good. We had, uh, he had not been uh, awarded um, Pennsylvania yet. So he was there, but he had not been declared as the winner. But um, we said, at least our task is done. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, when he was declared um, as uh, the president, then it, it became total jubilation um, for a good, for a good, uh, let's say, two months of campaigning. Uh, our focus was the three states, and particularly Florida, where we camped out in Florida for a good month. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the last one week of campaign, we expanded that activity uh, when it became clearer that uh, even states like Pennsylvania, states like Michigan, states like uh, Wisconsin are in the play, that he has been able to successfully go deep into the deep blue states uh, and uh, make an impact. When it became obvious that was, uh, was going to happen, he was already ahead in Ohio. In uh, Florida also he was slightly ahead. Uh, North Carolina, uh, we were tied, uh, but then when Pennsylvania came into picture and uh, Wisconsin came into picture and Michigan came into picture, we jumped in those states as well. Talk about Florida briefly, because I saw something the other day, you and Eric Trump going into Florida together, visiting a Hindu temple. What does that mean symbolically? Obviously, the Indian American community overwhelmingly is liberal, but you have cut to the core reaching out to Hindu Americans, trying to appeal to folks at a very base level, and, and bringing the, the Trump children involved, Laura Trump also going to Virginia to a, a Hindu temple. Uh, tell me about that experience, and, and why bring these folks to Hindu temples? What did that symbolize for you? Well, I'll uh, answer the, uh, this question in two parts. One, I will let uh, Manasvi uh, answer what uh, she was primarily the person in charge of that visit and uh, uh, was the principal host for Eric Trump at the Hindu temple of uh, uh, Orlando. But 
uh, one statement, I would like to um, sort of counter or give you a different perspective, and that is when you are talking about liberal. Uh, no, actually, Hindu Americans are quite conservative. Uh, so far, they haven't paid attention to what is uh, discussed on the policy tables, how legislation is framed, and uh, what I find uh, most experience, uh, most interesting experience for me during this last three months was I uh, addressed roughly 50 meetings, average about 200 people, so 10,000 um, Hindu Americans, Indian Americans in the meeting, and what we would find, uh, the uh, participants will be at the start of the meeting will be say maybe two-thirds Democrat or what you said liberal and at the end of the meeting you could just count for sure and it became almost a routine 90 percent will become Trump fans uh, Republican fans and conservative so that is simply an information gap once you educate the people and the uh, information gap is bridged and they become knowledgeable, uh, they essentially follow my example. I was a diehard Democrat for uh, first 10 years of my life in the United States. And once you come to know the policies and issues and how they affect our daily lives, then you have no choice but to... Uh, uh, come to the uh, Republican side because fundamentally we are free enterprise people. We have fiscal discipline. We have strong family values and we want a firm policy against uh, terrorism. So once people come to know details of those things, they again, they convert to uh, the Republican side. Trump side is easier even than the Republican side. Now going to this uh, 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 Orlando uh, temple visit, I'll let uh, Manasvi describe that. So um, I think traditional uh, in Hinduism, before you do anything good, you invoke gods, take their blessings. So I think um, Trump family being very supportive of uh, Hindus and Indians. They uh, uh, wanted to connect with us in that way, and they agreed to do these events with us. Um, Eric especially was very uh, sweet about it. Uh, he was very interested in knowing our traditions and knowing what each god signif uh, signifies. And by the end of the, the event, uh, we were like, uh, you know, uh, thank you for adopting Hinduism. He was like, no, thank you for adopting the Trump family. So they were very sweet about it. And um, a lot of t we were campaigning in Florida for about a month, and people were asking us that you know, are they with us? Are they really with us? You know, uh, uh, you know, this was their way of showing their support to us. They attended four of our events in in one month, twenty days actually. So this was their way of showing us support. What happens from here now, Shelley? Obviously, you've made a big splash, and you've succeeded. Your efforts have succeeded. Clearly, Donald Trump will be the forty fifth president of the United States. But there are obviously a number of folks that are concerned about the future. They don't know what to expect in January. What can you tell folks that did not vote for Donald Trump? What can you tell Indian Americans that did not vote for Donald Trump that uh, were ardent Hillary Clinton supporters or certainly longtime Democrats? What message do you have for those folks? We will be quickly uh, passing legislation that becomes official bills. Um, with respect to trade, with respect to defense, with respect there's defense ties between U.S. and uh, India, uh, and uh, trade, uh, there are lots of artificial ba um, barriers be in trade between United States and India. So those barriers will be dropped uh, as soon as uh, the Congress, where we have full support anyway, but. Uh, as soon as we have these bills put on uh, Mr. Trump's, President Trump's uh, desk, and now I have to get used to calling him President Trump, uh, <laughs> not Donald anymore, <laughs> like he always uh, chides me if I call him Mr. even Mr. Trump, he will always say, no, you have to call me Don Donald, okay? Uh, so uh, 
but anyway uh, so he has uh, promised uh, that the legislation will be passed very quickly also with respect to the immigration uh, issues that are plaguing uh, our uh, community uh, one of the the biggest one being that uh, all these 1.5 million h1 visa holders whose uh, green card petitions have been approved uh, but they have a wait period of 50 years to 75 years just because they're from india so that is a an issue which needs to be resolved uh, and in general uh, we will be also uh, talking about legislation which is really old time legislation from uh, 40s and 50s regarding uh, immigration laws um, so I don't want to take up that much of your time but uh, uh, I, I know the uh, legislation on the hill uh, in some depth but uh, is generally I will describe the uh, legislation bills in uh, Capitol Hill now will have a clear, quick path to becoming law. So certainly these are common issues that affect Democrats and Republicans alike, and, and certainly Indian Americans of all stripes uh, will certainly be uh, affected by this uh, change at the very top. Uh, give us a per personal anecdote. Obviously, you spent some time with the Trump family. You spent time with Donald Trump. You were there for the coronation uh, last night. Uh, what does this indicate to you? What does this indicate about America? What does this indicate about uh, the Indian American community? And what does this indicate uh, for 2017 and beyond for, for this country? Well, first thing, I uh, have to give a lot of credit to democracy, a lot of credit to uh, democracy in uh, U.S. Uh, it's in a way it reminds me of 19, I believe, 77 when Indira Gandhi was thrown out from India. Uh, that is, people have some very basic intelligence. Uh, for quite some time, long time, the Democrat Party and as well as the what is called the uh, establishment wing of the Republican Party was not listening to masses, huge, great big number of, uh, of ordinary middle class citizens whose, uh, who were not progressing in terms of their uh, wage growth, in terms of uh, their profession, in terms of uh, uh, their, um, let's say, job security, uh, and, um, uh, you know, one quarter of uh, the graduates which come out of college these days are still uh, have a hard time finding a job. So um, the economic growth, which is so anemic, 1.2% per year, uh, national debt going through the roof, and all these things uh, which um, uh, were not getting taken care of, um, you know, will get taken care of now. Uh, finally for you, uh, last night was historic for a number of fronts, obviously Donald Trump winning the election, but there were five Indian Americans uh, put in the United States Congress, one U.S. Senator Kamala Harris and four members of Congress. Uh, they're all Democrats. Uh, obviously, you're a Republican. Uh, you're making outreach to Indian Americans to try to get them to become Republicans. Uh, talk about the dialogue you'll have with these five new members of Congress uh, entering in 2017. Uh, what kind of relationship have you tried to build with them and, and Donald Trump for that matter? And, and moreover, are you going to try to steer uh, more Indian Americans towards the Republican Party uh, through this kind of outreach that you outlined uh, over the last couple of months? Uh, well, one particular gentleman who I know out of these five, uh, I could tell him, so sorry, Raja, I will <laughs> tell your audiences about, about you. So... Uh, Raja Krishnamurti has uh, is now Congressman Raja Krishnamurti, right? Uh, so, or Congressman elect Raja Krishnamurti. First of all, congratulations. Um, he has sat in my office, oh, for days and days on end, uh, trying to get my support. And he's a good guy, nice guy. And I always tell him, Raja. You just become a Republican, or at least an independent. 
and then we'll get you elected very quickly. Now, this time around, the opportunity came that there was nobody else. Tammy Duckworth had to move to the, uh, wanted to move to the Senate side, so there was nobody else, so he got elected. Otherwise, he would have a difficult time. Uh, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that uh, there are more Indian Americans, or half Indian Americans at least, uh, you know, partial Indian Americans who are in the, uh, in the uh, Congress. Uh, uh, but what is uh, very important to me uh, and our people is that they remain true to their faith, whatever their faith is. That is, if they are Hindus, they remain true to the Hindu faith, the Hindu way of life. If they are Muslim, let them remain true to the Muslim faith. If they are Christians, let them, uh, you know, uh, remain good Christians and not change their faith based upon expediency. And second is, uh, they, uh, I will be asking them, I will ask them to be bold enough to, uh, to fight your party leadership when it comes to interest of India. Uh, I will give you an example. I must uh, admit, uh, I'm, even though I'm a diehard Republican now, I'm quite impressed with uh, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. That, um, and I complimented her um, just uh, recently, maybe a couple of months ago, uh, that uh, she is not necessarily towing the, uh, uh, the uh, Pelosi line. And that, uh, you know, that will be our, our concern that we now have uh, uh, all three branches of government on the Republican side. We want to have a very rapid, quick uh, first 100 days where we get, uh, we have a very aggressive agenda. So, uh, and it is going to be pro-India, pro-Indian American agenda. And uh, wherever we could uh, uh, get the support of Indian American legislators uh, hope we get that. Uh, sure, there will be a fight from the top. That is, uh, 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 Nancy Pelosi will be issuing whips through, the, through their whips to oppose that legislation, even though it's uh, pro-India, pro-Indian American legislation. So uh, I would uh, ask these uh, new uh, congressmen-elects or congresswomen-elects to, um, to support uh, to side with uh, the national interest as well as the interest of U.S., interest of India, and the interest of 21st century to be an Indo-American century. Obviously, you're getting a lot of congratulations uh, all over the web and then through texts. Uh, Swami Ramdev uh, congratulated you, and uh, I understand uh, you coordinated a call between Prime Minister Modi and Donald Trump. Uh, how did that go, and, and what was the dialogue like? Well, no, actually, there was a, a request that had come in. Uh, we had been working very, very hard, so I was asleep. They, they did find me, but uh, I will say the call went well. Uh, I don't want to take any credit for that, uh, but the call had gone uh, uh, quite well. Uh, we liked the fact that uh, um, we have a prime minister who is uh, fairly aggressive. Uh, he wanted to beat uh, the Chinese to the punch, in uh, being the first one to uh, congratulate uh, uh, Donald Trump uh, for becoming the president-elect. Yeah.